Welcome back. This is Gaming with Rob. We're going to take another look at Maca Bellum today. For me, it's probably the most underrated strategic uh, real-time strategy game of 2024. Uh, it is absolutely amazing to play. I have done a game review, so make sure you check that out on the Maca Bellum uh, playlist. Right now, we're going to just have a look at the different units and see which are the stronger. Um... So we're going to go ahead and have some crawlers facing some fangs. Now, these are really the units uh, that most players start off with, and they're the cannon fodder. These are the troops that sit behind your big troops to let them uh, use their explosive power. But which is the strongest? Is it the fang or is it the crawler? Let's have a quick look. One thing to note... Over here, we've got HP, which is hit points. Then we've got the attack. Then we've got the speed. And this is really, really important when looking at the speed. Because if you've got uh, units such as these, and the speed is... I'm going to say that's six meters a second, which will be relative to the size of the map. So that is a very um, slow-moving unit. Whereas this unit over here, the crawler, is 16 uh, meters a second so if you've got a unit a big unit um, alongside it just here which is seven uh, meters a second and that's six meters a second then your big unit is going to be exposed first and what you're really looking for is this cannon fodder to be exposed then you've got the range so that's a 75 meter range as opposed to med laser this has to be uh, you know short range combat then you've got the attack interval, so how quickly it can attack. Uh, you've got your range and whether it attacks the ground or ground and air. Just like this one here, like the fang is ground and air. Um, the splash uh, attack interval 1.5 seconds and then your range. So let's go ahead and start this. And let's see which one comes out on top. I mean, it should technically be the fang comes out on top because they have the uh, range advantage. Mm. Let's have a look. Oh. But in fact, it is not. Wow, that does surprise me. Well, there we have it then. Uh, the fangs were actually um, beaten up big and proper by the crawler. Okay, so in the next round then, with the crawler winning that one, we're going to take the crawlers into the next round, and we're going to go up against the mustangs. Now, again, look at the hit points. 3-4-3, three, three, the hit points on these, 2-9-2. Two, um, so you would imagine, they're both the same speed, you would imagine that the Mustangs would take this one, but I was wrong last time around. So let's see how we get on with these. Mustangs are actually one of my favourite units on the game because they attack not just the uh, ground, but also attack the air. They should be too much for the crawlers. Let's see how this one pans out. Yeah, as, uh, as I expected... The Mustangs are definitely on top. Wow. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the melting pot next with the uh, massive amount of uh, hit points. And we'll take that up against the Rhino. Let's go ahead and start this one. You would think the melting pot would come out on top, but uh, we'll see what happens with this one. The melting pot, of course, the longer it latches on to the enemy. The wow. The rhino doesn't even get anywhere close. That was interesting. Um, I think what we might do on this. Let's. Let's put something as a bit of a medley. Now we know the crawlers do really well so let's go ahead and just put the crawlers in front 
So we've got the right on which the medley movement speed is 16. See, that's 16 as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the medley units just in front of the rhinos to see how much of a difference that makes against the melting pots because of course the melting pot uh, attacks one unit and there's a lot of medley in front um, so see where it's been very efficient in collect, uh, killing those medley units in this case the crawlers the rhino then gets a chance to actually do some damage now whether that will make a huge difference or not, I don't know. Yeah, it does look see. And that's the power of having the medley unit, as I said, in the first instance. Let's go ahead and switch this up then. Um, we know that the uh, fangs weren't as strong. Uh, the crawler was a much stronger unit. So if we go ahead and put some fangs... Where are the fangs? Where are they? There's the fangs there. If I put some fangs in front of these melting pots, let's just have a look at the speed of these. There was six. The melting pot was at six as well, so that should work out quite well. Let's go ahead and start this then. Uh, we know that the uh, crawlers are stronger than the fangs, as we saw in our first train. We also know that the melting pots are stronger than the rhinos so it will be interesting to see how we get on with these knowing they've both got medley units in front of them we are still gonna yeah the uh, rhinos and the and the crawlers are doing a, a better job oh oh look at that oh look at that the medley units make that much difference and that's where you've got to think of your tactics that was amazing. The medley units make such a difference as you can see there just in that round. So what I've gone ahead and done with this, I've effectively got some more crawlers. We've got four lots of crawlers. I've got four rhinos, um, but I've actually upgraded everything possible on the melting pot. So um, whilst there's more medley to deal with and an extra couple of rhinos, um, it's also going to deal with the absolute carnage that the melting pots are fully operational. It'd be in. Oh, look at that. It'd be interesting to see what goes on here. Whether the rhinos will have enough carnage in front of them to actually do some damage to the melting pots, or whether the melting pots are just far too strong. Upgrades do help a lot, but whether it's enough is yet to be seen, and it certainly is not. The melting pot proving to be an absolutely awesome tool in this one. I'll go ahead and promote it as well, making it even more devastating. But what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to upgrade everything. Uh, on this side as well. So we've got fully upgraded, not promoted, but fully upgraded crawlers and rhinos. And we'll see how we get on. Because the melting pot has proven to be such a formidable enemy. Wow, look at that. So they went invisible, which obviously gives them a massive advantage. And technically speaking, because they can only kill one thing at a time, the melting pot should take the fall, and they do this time around. Okay, so what are we going to do on this one? I think what we'll do is we will have. Let's have a look. Let's get let's get just an incredible amount of crawlers in here. I don't even know how many crawlers that is, but it's a fan fest of crawlers. Okay, just a ridiculous amount of crawlers. Don't know how many there are, but there's a hell of a lot of them. Let's see if we can... Uh okay. 
let's switch sides and what can we counteract with the crawlers um let's go with the acolyte oh let's go with the acolyte because i know the acolyte uh, are a counter to the crawlers i will put a decent amount of them down Bearing in mind the crawlers are all upgraded effectively. Okay. So yeah, look at that. Let's go ahead and start this one off and see what happens. Look at the amount of those crawlers that are all going invisible. And they're upgraded against these Acolyte, which are a counter to the crawlers. Wow. They absolutely annihilated them. Just proving that the upgrades are definitely um, the way to go if we... Go to the these here then. Um, and let's just fully upgrade them. They're fully upgraded. Let's see what happens this time around. It's like the Matrix, isn't it? But just sheer numbers means that they will probably go ahead and take these Acolytes out again. Or will they? Yeah, it's a sheer numbers game. Wow. Amazing. Okay, so look, this is Gaming with Rob. I just wanted to basically give you a little bit of uh, introduction to some of the crazy things you can do on Machiavellium. Uh, it's a brand new game for 2024. Um, definitely something that if you are an RTS enthusiast, definitely something to go ahead uh, and have a look at. There is so much to do on the game. And to be honest with you, it's such an enjoyable game to play as well. You've got your multiplayer, which you can have one versus one, two versus two, four player brawl, which I'm not a fan of, uh, not first on that, or survival mode. You can then uh, go on various missions. There's tournaments. I've not entered a tournament, actually. Unit modification, uh, which comes in comparison with the store, where you can purchase upgrades and skins. There's a community to get involved with, any replays that you've saved as well, and uh, some collections. So there's lots to go uh, ahead and get your teeth into, and, of course, it covers all areas of the globe as well um so yeah definitely a game worth playing like i said i've done a review uh, i'll link that review uh, at the end of this video if there's any matchups that you want to see or if you um are having a uh, difficulty with one particular troop who you're not able to counter let me know in the comment section below i will produce a video i will tell you that counter um, i am a decent player on this uh, machabellium game um, and uh, yeah anyway I'll leave it there for now this is Gaming with Rob thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it uh, welcome to the world of Machiavellium and I will see you over on the next video bye for now